Welcome to yet another episode of the Next Level on Purpose podcast. I am very excited because today we will delve into a topic that has been on my mind most of this week. And it's about how I conquered my biggest fears about starting a business. And I know if you're like me, because most of you are attracted to this podcast because the things that I share are things that you resonate with. They make sense to you. So if you're just like me, you understand that it's not easy to make that decision to launch a business. It's not easy to step out of your comfort zone and do something that you've never done before. And I acknowledge that and I understand it. But I also want to reiterate this as I have this conversation here that not everybody is an entrepreneur. Not everybody is created to run a business and that's okay. Why? Because there are people who are meant to be employed and serve at that level. We need that, right? But at the same time, there's those who are determined and uh like I really would want to launch this business, but there's some debilitating fears that are holding you back. There are some anxieties that are crippling you, doubt, uncertainty, and so many other things we're going to talk about today um, that will prevent you from taking the first step. And I want to share a little bit of my own journey. What are the fears that I have managed to overcome to where I'm at and how conquering these fears has been so instrumental in me creating a business that I am madly and deeply in love with. And I love to share stories and I'm going to give a little story that I read about not giving up on a dream because at the end of the day, just because of the time it will take to accomplish it, many people give up. But I want to encourage you the time will pass anyway. And I have butchered Al Nightingale's quote, but it's exactly that, that never give up on a dream just because of the time it will take to accomplish it, the time will pass anyway. And sometimes you ask yourself, how long do I have to wait? How long will it take before I get to do that which I love, launch that business? And I was reading a story from a book that I'm currently, a devotional that I'm currently using. And uh, they give a story about a tribe of Aborigines in Australia who perform a special rain dance. And this tribe, however, has something that distinctly sets them apart from other tribes. When this group performs, it always rains. And you can't argue with results, can you? Because of their phenomenal track record, They're able to charge the most money for their services. However, one season in particular, the farmers were experiencing a tremendous drought. One of them suggested each farmer put their money together and hire these extraordinary rain dancers. The farmers were desperate for rainfall, so they agreed. Sure enough, the tribe danced and suddenly the drought came to an end. The clouds darkened and the downpour came. The farmers were curious, and one of them asked, what is it about your tribe that makes it rain every time? What are you doing differently than the other tribes? The rain dancer simply said, we just dance until it rains. And let me tell you, my loves, there you have it. You need to dance until it rains. Others will quit before the rainfall. The other tribes could also have gotten the same results. And they would also have created the same reputation, if not better, and demanded the same higher fees. But they quit before they saw the fulfillment of their success. So I want to come to you. How are your fears stopping you from persisting towards your dreams? How long do you push yourself to get up each morning and commit to what it is that you want to do, especially as pertains to launching this business? And the good book says, let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not give up. That's from Galatians 6 and 9. And with that background, I want us to go into what it takes, really, 
to launch a business that you're madly deeply in love with, even as you're transitioning from a corporate career or you're deciding that you're actually going to launch a second business, a third business, whichever place you are, it requires you to take a courageous step. It requires you to be bold. It requires you to, you know, to see the possibilities that may not necessarily have even dawned on you. You know, you may have heard of Peter Dreyker, a management consultant and writer, and he puts it so well. He says, wherever you see a successful business, someone once made a courageous decision. Wherever you see a successful business, someone once made a courageous decision. Running a successful business, whether part-time or full-time like myself now, it requires a lot of courage. It requires a lot of work. And some days, you know, I have felt personally like, will I ever see the fruits of my labor? And some of you have seen the success is an iceberg meme where it shows the to- someone at the top of the iceberg. You're just seeing the victory. But nobody talks about the things that are underneath the iceberg. You do not get to see the rejection entrepreneurs go through, the sacrifices, the tears. Girl, this coach has shed lots of tears. They could probably feel an ocean, a a bit of an exaggeration, but you get what I mean. The discipline, the failures, because they come, and my dad says failure is feedback, but let me tell you, it still hurts. Let's not kid ourselves. The late nights, the really early mornings, shared in the previous episode how I spent some time, I'm on coaching calls late into the night because of the time differences with um, some of the programs I'm in that are not in the same time zone I'm at. You have to sacrifice. The disappointments that come when things don't go, when someone does not sign up and they had promised or you get clients who... Uh, perhaps not meet the end of the bad game or, you know, so many things will happen that can be very disappointing. But it requires courage and that risk-taking element because nobody knows what's on the other side. But for me, the risk of regret is so much worse than all these things that I'm talking about, like the fulfillment that has come as a result of me pursuing my soul's calling, I cannot put a price on it. And the persistence, I can tell you that running a business is like having a baby. There is no emotion you will not go through. You know, you nurture the baby. You ensure that the baby is treated well. When the baby cries, you have to make sure the baby is fed, right? Even if you're very tired, you cannot watch your starving baby because you're tired. It takes work. And some of the lessons I've learned, you know, before we go into the fears for me is being able to push through even when it doesn't make sense. And that can be very stressful. I remember the start of my entrepreneurial journey and it happens even now. Sometimes I get levels of anxiety that I cannot even express, especially in the middle of a launch or I can be sleeping and there's nothing really happening and I just get a jolt in my sleep. All because of this entrepreneurial journey. So let's not kid ourselves that when you see somebody looking successful, that it's all daffodils and daisies and rainbows and candy and all those good things. There's a lot that comes. And when Theodore Roosevelt said that the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred with dust and sweat, who strives valiantly, who errs and may fall again and again because there is no effort without error or shortcoming. There is absolutely no effort without error or shortcoming. And that's what I have learned about entrepreneurship. And the best gift that anybody can give themselves at the start of launching a business is having a coach and a mentor who will help them see the 
wood from the trees, like really help you see beyond your fears, your anxieties, and help you process the emotions that come with this journey. I remember speaking to my dad about my business. He's an entrepreneur himself, a very seasoned one, and very successful one, I must say. And every time my dad launches a business or anytime he does something, he's really bold and he's, he's very bold and courageous. And he always tells me this, that for him, it's very clear. People on their deathbed usually regret the things they did not do, not their failures. So if you don't try, you will never know if you have it in you. And that's the philosophy that he has used to launch business after business after business. He says, listen, if you don't try, you'll never know if it was meant for you. You will never know how good you could potentially be at it. You never know how far you could take it. And this has been such great advice for me. Such great advice. And it's changed my attitude in a way that has helped transform my fear into an advantage. So let's dig into some of the fears that I conquered at the start of my business and I continue to go through them, but I know how to process them. And that's why this podcast episode will help you because you will realize that what you think is personal is universal. For me, it was the fear of lacking the necessary skills. Having worked in corporate for very long, I had a certain way of doing things. A corporate mindset and an entrepreneurial mindset are two totally different things. And I can tell you, we'll definitely have a full episode on that. When you're in the corporate space, there's a lot of bureaucracy, red tape. There's a way things are done. There is a chain of command. There's processes and procedures that must be followed. There's somebody at the back end of everything. But as an entrepreneur, you are everything. From the start to the beginning of the process, it is all up to you. And for me, I was like, will I be able to cope with not knowing and I one asked myself, do I have the necessary skills to make it work? And I kept thinking to myself, I need qualification after qualification or training after training before launching my business. And yes, I did hire and I still continue to work with multiple coaches to help me scale my business. But that's not it. I already had the skills inside of me. And if you listened to my previous episode of the podcast, please go if you haven't. We talked about the core essence, the true essence of you. And the true essence of me is that I am a teacher. I am a mentor. The things that I speak about are already innately in me. All I have done is refine them and gotten the support and the structure to make them make sense for my nature. It has to make sense for your nature. So it's not about lacking the skills because a lot of the skills that I had from my corporate job, I was able to transfer them easily into my entrepreneurial work. So what are the transferable skills that you can look at today and you'll be like, hmm, if I run my business, this would apply. This would work here and there. There are many. Go for it. Another thing that I conquered was the fear of humiliation. And a lot of it for me was around my ego. I'm a Leo. And, you know, it's not about the star signs here, but we love, we're natural leaders and we want to be affirmed and we want to take our position. And for me, I was concerned. What if other people think my ideas are silly? What if people are just waiting for me to fail, for my business to fail? Will I be able to stand the humiliation if things don't work? Are thoughts that came to me so frequently. But I want to say this. There's a saying that says, he who laughs, laughs, laughs best. And this also is true for entrepreneurs. Besides, have a little more faith in your family and friends to take your plan seriously. And even if they don't, you have, again, I always emphasize you need to have a coach, you need to have a mentor who sees things the way you do, who will guide you, who will encourage you, who will help you see your blind spots and really help you process the emotions that come with this launching of a business. I want to say that the perceptions of humiliation or embarrassment, they are truly often false and are mainly rooted in low self-esteem. 
if you believe in yourself and you believe that you're a big deal and that your business idea will change lives, others will too, no matter how crazy it sounds. I remember at the start of my journey, many people would say to me, but what is a coach? How, why do people need to pay you for this when there is YouTube? But I can tell you for a fact, YouTube will not give you the results that I will be able to give you because I'm able to go deep into what is happening. The person on YouTube will just give you, you know, top level things that you can just look at. But you need somebody who will be able to dissect your feelings, your emotions, your thoughts, will really help you create an actionable plan that you will stick to and they will hold you accountable to make sure that it comes to fruition. So if you do not have that person up your alley, I would suggest you do because a lot of me being able to move past my fears was that support. And it came from me even speaking about my fears to my coach, talking about what I was worried about pertaining the humiliation and all that type of stuff. And I want you to think that when you doubt your skills, go back to when you started your first job. When I started my first job with the bank that I was working in, in uh, I was barely 22, literally, you know, straight out of college. I did not know everything. I knew nothing really, you know what I mean? Brand new job. So think about you. Did you know everything when you started your first job? No. Did you learn everything you needed to know quickly? Yes. We are adaptable. Did you take time to educate yourself? Absolutely, I'm sure you did because you had to go through the training. You had to go through that development. You had to, to know what the job role and, uh, required. And that's the same thing with your business. Did you ask for help when you did not know? I hope you did. Think of this when you fear that you lack the necessary skills to start your own business because it is exactly the same. Another fear that I had was, how will I stand out in the market? As I said, many of the coaches at the time I started were complete, looked very different from me. Blonde haired, blue eyed, older gentlemen, different accents from myself, shared different ideologies from what I share. And some of them were very seasoned, have been in the game for so long. And I was like, what do I have to bring to the table? But let me tell you, when I showed up as myself, in my true authentic glory, I did not hide anything about myself. I spoke and shared from my heart. I shared my story. I shared my thoughts. I shared my dreams. I shared my aspirations. I shared my fears and anxieties. And I can tell you, people just started getting drawn to me like a moth to a flame. I did not hide. There are multiple videos where I would cry. I would get so emotional about different things, and I still do. Because I believe that for me to be the best entrepreneur and the best coach that I can be, I have to show myself true. Not only true to myself, not only true to God, but even true to those who... I am serving and I'm yet to serve. And let me tell you that when you step into yourself and get outside of your ego, you realize that it's not about you. And the moment I realize that on the other side of me stepping up are people who are, have been praying for me. They're like, where will I get a coach who will help me move past my fears, my limiting beliefs to launch my business? Where will I get a coach that understands me and understands the craziness of corporate and has done it and has launched the business and the business is successful? I still have many strides to make. We are growing and scaling the business, but at least it's off the ground. And sometimes all you need is that, a reassuring voice telling you that you can do it. A big fear I had was around competition, but there's nothing like competition. Because what you have to offer is only unique to you. If you put Coach Joanne in a room and you put five, 50 million other coaches and we all read from the same script, read from the same um, script, let's put it that way, 
you will be drawn to somebody more than the other. There's something about me that will attract you to me or there's something about somebody else that will attract you to them. And that's why I always say that your vibe attracts your tribe. You have your tribe waiting for you to show up. There are people who are praying for you right now and saying, I can't wait for this person to come and give me the solution that I have been tr trusting for. And that solution provider is you. It's time for you to step up and put the fears aside. And I'll definitely share with you some tips that you can use to deal with fear as we get closer to this episode finish. I want you to understand that fear of uncertainty is real. When I started my business, I realized that I didn't have all the answers. And sometimes I felt that I did not have enough information to make some critical decisions because, as I said, I was starting from scratch. And I'm telling you, a few times I would wake up in the middle of the night paralyzed with doubt and only certain of my inadequacies because I kept thinking to myself, how am I going to do this? I've never done this before. And that is where you learn to embrace the uncertainty when you embrace uncertainty, because nobody knows, you don't even, you yourself, you don't even know how long you're going to be in the job you're in. Nobody knows how long you're going to be in the situation you're in, whatever it is. Everything we do, we do it with uncertainty, even without knowing. Who tells you that you're going to enter your car and drive to work and get to work safely? Of course, my prayer is that that's what's going to happen, but nobody knows about the future. And that's the same with this entrepreneurial journey. By embracing uncertainty, you will become naturally confident because you will then realize that nobody has all the answers and decisiveness usually wins. I would go to my coaches, I would go to my mentors and ask them, what do you think about this or the other? And they would be like, I don't know, you have to try it. And that helped me grow some serious balls around around confidence and around trusting myself and honoring myself and believing that I can do it. And I want to ascertain to you right now, you are a big deal. But you have to see yourself as a big deal before the world sees you as such. You need to step into your true essence and authenticity and believe that what has been put inside you was put there so that it can be an innovative solution to something that the world needs. Otherwise, why was it given to you? One thing is that I one thing I know is that God does not waste gifts, He does not waste talents. What He gives to you has been given to you so that you can be able to use it for His glory. And the moment we put ourselves in the situation and say, how do I look? How will I do? You're not thinking about the solution provide you as a solution provider or you living out your purpose. You're thinking from the ego and all the ego does. It's about you. But this is not about you. Your purpose is never about you. Your purpose is about the impact, the influence and the service that you will offer in the world. And of course, by that doing, you get re remunerated in ways that I cannot even express. The fulfillment is way beyond. We're created to serve, not servitude, not to be a slave, but we're here to do something in the world that will completely, completely change the world just because you took that one step and the world is waiting for you. Do not be afraid to think big. You know me, I love to cast big visions and that's why we have the vision casting events. I teach workshops on vision because I know that when I, I have thought big, the results have been big. When I have played small, the results have been small. What do you focus on expands? And I have realized that you can actually be the person to prophesy upon your life what it is that you want to see. And the bigger I have dreamt, the more confident I have been in my work, the results have shown as such. When I have made a decision that I'm going to launch a program and I'm going to bring in 10 clients and I walk in with the full conviction that, that is what is going to happen, I can tell you I get more than the 10. 
when I'm so certain of what it is that I'm offering and I stand by it no matter what, the results always prove themselves and that's thinking big. I want you to think for yourself, where are you playing small? Where are you accommodating mediocrity and making it your bedfellow? No more accepting mediocrity. No more playing small. You are created to do big things and the world is waiting for you to come and express yourself in the best way that you can. And I want to say this. A successful business can take on a life of its own. And sometimes you may be scared like me about the responsibility and the overwhelm that would come as a result of that. That by my dreaming, dreaming big, will I turn my organization into something bigger than I can handle? And that in itself has many times given me cold sweats. That what if my business grows so big that my clients will no longer have personal access to me or, you know, or the business becomes so big that I don't even know what's happening behind it or I become disconnected to it. All those are valid fears and I have had them so often. However, what I have learned in my journey is to trust in my ability to grow my business intelligently and to delegate appropriately when necessary. I've built a little team that I'm very proud of and I know what to give and what to handle myself. And as I shared earlier, remember that the overnight sensation is extremely rare. Those overnight successes that you hear about are just in the movies. Launching a business requires hard work, it requires tenacity, it requires determination, and above all, you're in it for the long haul. You cannot wake up and do something for three weeks and say it's not working. You cannot launch a business and put it out there and share stuff on social media when you feel like willy nearly once a month and wonder why you don't have clients. Or you know that you're meant to invest in systems and processes and even mentorship, but you're like, oh, I'm not going to do that. And you still expect people to invest in you. It doesn't work that way. The laws operate and the law of sowing and reaping, that's what it is. You reap what you plant and you plant what you reap. So if you plant bad seed, you will reap bad seed. But if you plant rich seed in rich fertile soil, and you keep watering it and nurturing it. I can tell you for a fact, it doesn't matter when. It's just a matter of time. You will be bamboozled by what will come out on the other side. And I want to say this. You will experience fear. That's inevitable. But I want you to go back to what the good book says. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. And I'm going to give you some practical tips to deal with fear. The first one is to be conscious of your fears and address them proactively, just like I have done. I've shared with you most of the fears that I've gone through and how I was processing them as I launched the business. Do not block them out. Acknowledge the existence of these fears and deal with them. Do not put your head in the sand like the proverbial ostrich. You need to face them. You need to acknowledge them. The second thing that I want to say to help you deal with fear is changing your attitude to failure. As I've shared repeatedly, my dad always says to me that failure is feedback. And actually, failure is really what you perceive it to be. Ask yourself, why are you scared of failure? Is it because you don't want to lose? Lose status, lose money, lose authority? You're only a loser if you allow yourself to be one. And I always say the people who win the biggest have always lost at some point. I've put out stuff into the market, courses and programs that have not done as well as I anticipated. And some have been a total flop. But I have not given up because I know my calling. This is it. This is my plan A. I don't have a plan B. And I am committed to going the long haul. So if something does not work, I ask myself, I go back and look at the data. Why is it not working? Could be how I positioned it to the market. Could be the timing. Could be so many different factors, but just dismissing something and saying it doesn't work is very shallow. 
You need to go deep and ask yourself, why I, do I just react to failure without really deep diving into it? And let me tell you what, you will get the answers right there. And the last tip that I would encourage you to latch on whenever fear comes in as you start your enterprise is prepare to succeed. You are a big deal, as I've repeatedly said to you, and the world needs you. On the other side of your fear, on the other side of your discomfort is a world that is so beautiful. Your ideal clients are waiting for you. They've been praying and saying, when will this person come? And the only person who can stop you from really manifesting the business of your dreams is you. So prepare to succeed. You can fail by letting your fear paralyze you. For me, that's where the failure comes in, when you allow the fear to paralyze you. Or you can succeed by using that same fear to empower you. The choice is yours. Remember, this is your one royal life. Live it with boldness and courage. As an entrepreneur, many things will come. As an aspiring entrepreneur, many things will come. But I can tell you for a fact that if you're not honoring your purpose, the alternate, the alternative is not exciting. It is depressing because you will be suffocating your soul. So I'll take a full circle to where we began this. And it is with what I would say again. As a business owner, a lot of things are going to happen. And I understand that entrepreneurship isn't for everyone. And if overcoming these fears feels impossible, I can tell you for a fact that entrepreneurship may not be for you and that's okay. But if you make the decision to take that leap into entrepreneurship, you will soon see that these fears are very real, but you can overcome them. And address, addressing them early on and developing a workable action plan to conquer them can help you start your business on the right foot. So tell me, what are you waiting for? Go on and launch that business. Remember, as Peter Drucker said, wherever you see a successful business, someone once made a courageous decision, and that is you. Go all in, go for it. I'm here on the other side cheering you on because I know this. If you take these ideas and concepts and run with them, success for sure is inevitable. Until my next episode, I will love you and leave you. Go to the show notes to find different ways that you can reach out to me. And I can't wait to see you in the next episode. Have a wonderful one.